Scientists have just completed what is the biggest study into the genetic causes of three of the really common cancers, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostate cancer. This was a huge effort. It took more than a thousand scientists at 130 institutions around the world, and it took them several years to do this. And what they did was take 100,000 people with different types of cancer and compared their genetic makeup with that of 100,000 people who were healthy. And with that, you find genetic markers, areas of the genome which look different in those with the disease. And you can use those to then develop tests which will highlight the people who are most at risk of developing these diseases. What you can do with this kind of information is develop cheap tests. They would cost about five pounds and could be done at GP surgery, where a patient would simply spit into a test tube and have that analyzed for DNA. And you would check it for signs of these markers to see which of these genetic faults they have that would predispose them to any of these cancers. Now, for example, this would be hugely useful in prostate cancer. What you could do is you could identify the 1% of men whose risk of developing prostate cancer at some time in their life goes up to 1 in 2, so 50%. And the national average risk is about 1 in 10. Now, having these tests is one thing, but you need to know how to use them well and what to do with the results. You certainly want to know at what age do you want to start screening people and who do you want to screen. This test wouldn't be used on its own. What doctors would do is they would run a genetic test like this, but then also build in information from your lifestyle that will either raise or lower your risk of these cancers as well, because taken just as a genetic test, it will only give you half the picture. Well, if you had a test for um, breast cancer and it came up that you were, say, 30% at risk of having breast cancer, that, that's one figure that you can hold on to. But if you then look at whether that person has had children, whether they've breastfed, both of those things reduce the risk of breast cancer. So you'd need to involve all of this information to get a realistic uh, risk profile for that person. There are trials going on now to work out how best to use these tests in terms of when to give them and what do you do with the results? How does that inform um, and tailor the kind of screening that you'd be wanting to give to people? Now, with all of that built in, scientists think it will probably be about five years before these kinds of tests and screening are available through the National Health Service. This project has looked at three of the big cancers, breast cancer, ovarian cancer and prostate cancer, but it's going to fuel far more studies like it and some have already been done of course, but these will be bigger studies that try and build up a more complete picture of the genetics that underlie a lot of cancers that are out there. And the ultimate aim is for doctors to have tests that will be able to test for a lot of these cancers at once. So you won't go and have to spit in a test tube to get tested for one cancer after another, but instead you would have all of these tests done on one chip that would give you a personalized profile of all of the cancers that you're likely to encounter in your life and, and the risk factors. And that would then determine how you're screened for each of those throughout your life.